right, welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's been a minute since I've done a video. Um, there's definitely a lot of things to, to talk about. Um, I think a lot of things have happened in the truck world. Um, you know, and there's definitely a lot of uh, wrong information or information. Um, I hate to even term this information, but just information that pe people just don't know what they don't know. And a lot of times people will um, talk about things based on their experiences and apply what they've experienced um, to something. Example, uh, the new 2025 uh, Ram Heavy Duty has an all new Cummins diesel. And this Cummins diesel uh, has a new fuel pump. It's the CP8. Well, the CP8 looks exactly like a CP4.2. So some people think that it's the same pump. They just put more dots on it and they call it the CP8. And I've, I've read comments where they think that it's the exact same pump. Well, it's not. Um, and, and also, uh, they came out with um, a seventh injector for the GPF, which uh, a lot of people online, uh, when you watch certain videos on the 25 Ram Heavy Duty, they think that uh, it's still the in-cylinder design when it comes to doing the uh, regeneration. Well, that's also not true. So um, I'm going to cover... Um, this, the, these issues in uh, this, this article that came out from Turbo Diesel Register. Now, Turbo Diesel Register, for those of you in the Cummins world, Turbo Diesel Register is the, uh, really the, the first um, Cummins diesel form, right? I know that power-driven diesel, they, they, you know, they're like, they talk, they talk about Cummins form, and Cummins form is a very old form, but the original, really the, I mean, really, if you want to go back, um, I mean, there are others <laughs> that don't exist anymore. But um, I would say the mainstream, the big Cummins Forum, um, you could say, is Turbo Diesel Register. Uh, and I, I, I'm, I'm a member of Tur Turbo Diesel Register. I've been for, gosh, oh, forever, I feel like. And Cummins Forum. Cummins Forum is, I would say, like the second um, biggest Cummins Forum out there. But um, anyways. Um, so Turbo, Turbo Diesel Register came out with this article. It, ju it just dropped. And there's a lot of really great information in here. Basically, um, they, uh, they did an interview with Ram Cummins and, and some of their engineers, right? And some of the, so you, you can go to Turbo Diesel, you can go to Turbo Diesel Register. Uh, it's hard to say. <laughs> you can go to their website and you can read the article for yourself. There's a ton of great information here. Um, but I, what I want to talk about and focus on is um, one, the emissions and also the CPA. So um, as everyone knows, the, the DOC, the diesel oxidation catalyst is now right behind the, the turbo, right? And that's to help, you know, get things heated up quickly. But I want to talk about the seventh injector because in this, um, and also the, uh, the CP8. So we're going to get to the CP8 because it's not a CP4, it's a CP8 and it's a new pump, right? But I want to, I want to go to, where is it? Um, the emissions, I was just reading it, um, and they talk about how uh, they use, um, they, they do indeed use um, a seventh injector, right? Okay, so here it is. So exhaust system right here, right? So TDR, they ask a question, and then a Ram Cummins engineer explains it. So um, we're, we're going to start here, right? Exhaust system, TDR. Explain the engine mount to DOC and how the downpipe has changed in 2025. Ram Cummins engineer. The exhaust system on the 25 engine is far different from those used on previous Cummins diesels. We moved the diesel oxidation catalyst right up to the turbo so it lights off fast and heats up quicker than it would if it were further downstream like in previous engines. That's better for emissions. Additionally, we went to the closed couple DOC for better, better thermal management of the overall after treatment system. So to your point, having the catalyst there does give us a better and faster control over the uh, exhaust temperature, which is of course is what's needed for the diesel particulate filter that is uh, a little bit further downstream. Next question, TDR. Explain the changes to the diesel particulate filter. Ram Cummins. I'd say the biggest thing that's changed on the DPF 
is that we are now using an external hydrocarbon doser to do the regeneration of the DPF. And we're not as dependent uh, on the upstream components as we once were. So in that respect, we have the ability to better improve the soot loading and soot accumulation on the DPF with this architecture, TDR. What is the external hydrocarbon doser? Ram Cummins. So during the regeneration cycle, we use a separate nozzle, a seventh injector, if you will, that's spraying diesel fuel in the exhaust stream directly upstream of the DPF to provide the extra fuel for its regeneration. Collectively, putting the DOC closer to the exhaust stream and implementing the dozer at the DPF has definitely reduced any DPF clogging concerns. So there you go. TDR asked the question. A Ram Cummins engineer answered that question. There have been many mainstream truck channels ever since the 25 Ram came out and they were able to talk about the, the 25 Ram. No one has talked about the exhaust system. Like, no one. Why? Why would you not talk about that? I would think some of the biggest things to change um, and that I would think would be important to report on is the emission system. Why do I say that's important? Because everybody complains about the emission system. Everyone's, oh, well, we got to get rid of emissions. Emissions are stupid and blah, 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 blah. Right? Yeah. I don't like, I don't like DPFs. I don't like EGRs. I don't like the, you know, SCL, I don't like those systems either. However, I also like clean air, right? Um, but then again, I drive an older diesel, so I don't got to worry about emissions, right? But uh, the point is, is that they made tremendous changes to the emission system. So why would none of the mainstream truck channels talk about it? Why? They, people like um, TFL truck, um, Truck King and, and so many others, they had one-on-one -on, -one on screen interviews, ride-alongs, discussions with the Ram Cummins engineers, yet no one asked about the emission systems. No one talked about it. I don't understand that. I really don't. So that, that's just me venting. Okay. So let's go up here and talk about the CPA, right? So let's where do I want to start right here? Uh, let's just start here. So fuel injection pump, right? TDR. Now to the question that most diesel owners want to know. What is a Bosch CP8 fuel injection pump that's used on the new engine? Ram Cummins. We needed much higher fuel pressures for this new fuel system. We moved from 32,000 PSI to 39,000 PSI. So some significant improvements and increases were needed in the fuel injection pump. That's what made us consider a new fuel pump design. Okay, so TDR asks, the CP8 looks identical to the CP4.2, but it's different in size, question mark. Ram comments, correct. While the CP8 may look the same, the internals are different with improved pumping and roller elements, along with isolated loop fuel lubrication. In partnership with Bosch and with Stellantis, this pump has gone through significant testing and vast improvements, uh, and vast improvements. We've developed new tests that not only helped revalidate the older CP3 that has been used since 2003, it's funny how they forgot to mention they used CP4 from 2019 through 2020, but whatever, uh, but also help validate the new CP8. The tests are run without, uh, with out of specification conditions to ensure we are validating beyond what could be seen in application. Okay, so TDR then asks, I understand one of the validation tests of the CP8 was called the killer test, uh, where the pump was fed worst case scenario fuel with contaminants under the worst conditions testing the pump until it, until it failed. Can you elaborate? Ram Cummins. The test is run with out of specification fuels, out of specification fuel temperatures, as well as fuel pump speeds and pressures that are not possible in application. The equivalent of operation of operating the 
uh, for thousands of miles under the most severe temperatures with the poorest of fuel. It was created to ensure that the fuel pump in a ram would have the robustness and durability that Cummins is known for. Okay, I, I, before I continue, I know, you know, what's changed? They really haven't talked about what's changed on the inside. Okay, we're going to get to that. TBR. What re-engineering resulted from this broader, much more intensive validation testing of the CP8? Ram Cummins. The Bosch CP8 is a new fuel pump. The roller and shoe design that was in the older that was in the old pump has been redesigned to a pinned roller tappet architecture. Another major difference is the lubrication circuit of the CP8. It's an independent circuit from the one that feeds the injectors. The fuel used for lubrication goes through the filter, through a filter, then to the pump, lubricates the rotating pump internals, exits the pump, and goes back to the tank. The fuel that comes into the pumping elements, feeding the rail and the injectors is a separate circuit. So fuel going into the pump no longer runs in series, it runs in parallel. Did you guys catch that? Let me read some of that part again. The roller and shoe design that was in the old pump has been redesigned to a pinned roller tappet architecture. That's huge. That means that the, the roller shoe design, right, um, in, particularly in the old CP4s, they, they oftentimes, no, I wouldn't say often, I mean, the failure rate of the CP4 is high when you go online and you read about it, but when you actually do a little bit of research, that's why Ford has never been the CP4 because it's like, I think less than 4% of all their trucks have CP4 failures because of uh, the pump itself uh, and not owner operator error, right? And, and when I say pump itself, I mean like the roller, um, rotating that happens it, it once it rotates it's, it's done right we, we all know about that but it looks like that looks like the pump has been redesigned to a pinned roller tappet architecture now when I read that it seems like and because we talked about the rollers right we talked well you know if they pinned it or if they they created a way that it wouldn't rotate then it'd be fine at least that'd be one of the ways to cure that problem and would appear that the CP8 has done exactly that not only that, they, when you read how the fuel is injected versus the fuel that lubricates the pump is now different, right? So the, 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 the fuel, right, as, as it reads here, the fuel used for lubrication goes through a filter, then to the pump, lubricates the rotating, rotating pump internals, exits the pump, and goes back to the tank. Then the fuel that comes into the pump, uh, into the pumping elements, feeding the rail and the injectors is a separate circuit. So if there was a failure, it seems like that they've done a better job of catching it, if that makes sense, right? So maybe the internal parts that are being lubricated, if it should fail, it won't go into the uh, injectors. It won't make its way downstream to the injectors. It'll, it may make its way back to the tank, right? At least that's how I read it. So you guys can take a look at this. Go to Turbo Diesel Register um, and read the article, right? Take a look at it. So the summary of this video is that, yeah, there is a seventh injector in the exhaust system that takes care of regeneration no longer an in-cylinder design, right? And to those that were saying that on some of these comments, like, where did you get that information? Like, when they said things like, when, when some of these folks said that, nope, they're still using an in-cylinder design, but they had no evidence proving that. They're just speaking out of their butt, is essentially, right? They, 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 they're just speaking words into the air. That means nothing, right? Here, we have actual questions and answers being provided. Not only that, uh, channels like, uh, I think JB Reviews and Truck Stuff, right? When they were underneath the truck, they actually showed, oh, hey, we got a seventh injector. There it is, right? 
uh, for whatever for whatever reason, they're not too happy about that, which doesn't make sense to me. But whatever. Um, so your 25 Ram Cummins should no longer be making oil. Although I own several uh, fourth and fifth gens, and uh, none of my trucks made oil. So, but you know, I take good care of my trucks, good maintenance, and so forth. So, um, but anyways, uh, so there's that. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, you can, guys can uh, go to uh, Turbo Diesel Register and you guys can uh, read the stuff for yourself. Uh, it's out there. The information's out there. All you got to do is read. So see you on the next video.